Hi everybody, Brother James here. I uh, just want to do a video today, a quick video about how to go soul winning. Now, if you've never been soul winning before, don't worry. I understand that it can be very anxious if you're not a talker or you have um, many hang-ups or whatever it is about going out, um, especially in today's society. Don't worry, I'm going to quickly cover all of those things. The first thing I want you to know is that when you go to somebody's door, be prepared. Always be prepared. Now, what I mean by that is we're going to hit hit some peas up. We're going to start with praying. I, you know, Jesus told us to pray in all things. Do all things through prayer, right? So I suggest praying before, perhaps even during, and certainly after. I'll be honest, sometimes I forget to do during the, the middle bit because it can, it can get there, but don't worry about that. God will see those things. Um, but yeah, I encourage prayer always. Practically, I always think as well is to plan your route. So to know exactly where you're going to, especially if, you know, if it's a common sense thing, if it's somewhere where you haven't been before or you, you know, uh, you know your area, but you know, you've never been out soul win with somebody else. Um, another crucial thing is uh, to go out with uh, somebody else as a witness, because there's a few things around this. The key point being Jesus said, go out into the highways and the byways two by two, compelling them to come in. So what, what one of the breakdowns of that is that, um, and I'll give use this as a practical example is let's say you whoever's doing the talking because uh, there's a key rule around this if somebody's talking I'll just say this now if somebody's talking the other person should not talk at all unless you have a well long established relationship with that person and even then that is a very very rare occasion um, the other person like I say getting back to this point is that they're there ideally to pray while you're talking to learn maybe as a silent partner um, or to give literal practical support, which is a very important point because sometimes I'll be talking to the door and I need brother David or somebody else to deal with a dog or children or, you know, the people have a lot of different situations going on. But whoever I'm engaging with at the time, I want them to know this is all their time. We're at their door. We want to make them feel welcome. Now, I want I want to pass on a bit of sales knowledge as well because by trade I'm I'm a, a salesman so I find it very easy to speak to people, okay. And I know there's a lot of people um can find it difficult to speak to people, um, so one of the things I would say to people is always naturally is to hold a couple of three second breaths. Make sure, again, going back to the plan, what you're going to say, have the scriptures ready, highlighted in your Bible. If you know them off the top of your head, great. But one of the tips, even that, and even I sometimes forget to do this, one of the tips is um, to ideally show people um, in your Bible. I mean, a lot of times we do do this, but there's, there can be times when you don't do that. And again, sometimes you may not get the opportunity, they may want to listen, but not look. That is also possible. Okay um you know um i will give a little caveat to this as i like to do i like to use the word caveat because for example let's say you've potentially speaking to a safe person or a very liberal christian and they uh listen to what you're saying now the word richly dwelleth in me um and you know i can do this with brother david sometimes where I paraphrase a lot <laughs> with scriptures. Um, it's the way my mind works. Some I'll have nail off the beam. That's just the way I am. But what I can do, as long as I'm getting the point across, that's the crucial bit. Because technically you're doing the saving, it, but it's God's word. The powers come from God's word. And so if you can do this over time and being seasoned for all these occasions, not specifically only, but what helps is when people want to see how much you studied and learned subconsciously. They may not, not nine times, 99 times out of uh, 100 are not going to ask, hey, let me test your Bible knowledge, you know, but Brother David or whoever I'm with, 
I may just, while I'm still keeping eye contact, because eye contact is a good thing, I'm going to get them to read the scriptures off by me showing them my knowledge of it. Because one, that's doing two things. One, it shows how much you're invested um, and they can pick up that passion on you. And two, it also um, it also shows that like you're not um, making it up or whatever, so that if they need to check that, you can show them that as evidence, okay? Um, but yeah, I, what I would say is this as well. Um, if you ever get invited into a home, make sure that um, obviously both of you go in, one person doesn't stand outside, and ideally that's not a single woman or somebody who's vulnerable, obviously, or whatever. Um, and all I would say is this as well. If you think somebody's vulnerable, still give them the gospel. Still give them the gospel. Um, because you don't know if that's going to be that person's last day. You know, um, there is testimony where people are about to hang themselves and they've had soul wonders knock at the door. People who are just about to go into hospital for an operation or, or whatever it is. There's a plethora of things. Um, but yes, uh, make sure you go through, obviously, a thorough presentation. And I will say this. Don't be afraid of changing up, especially as you... Um, get more seasoned now i generally tick, stick to something which is um uh, univ universally known in baptist circles something called the romans road um if you check out the link in the description below i've put a um brother david's gonna put a um call for salvation on there um so generally follow that but there are lots of other ways um but one of the things i am going to cover to put on our notepad ting in the future is um something which is a fancy term which i don't like to use but it's something called apologetics um and that's a fancy way of explaining to somebody basically now what's that i can hear you, all you theologians well yes of course in certain discourse you're naturally going to gravitate towards certain subjects so technically you can say apologetics but I'm not going to, firstly, I'm not apologizing for anything. And secondly, I'm not going over to win somebody with secular based knowledge all the time. I'm leading them with the gospel because it's God's word that's doing the saving. Now, in certain conversations, um, then things are going to come into it. Um, we'll, we'll, uh, this video right now, um, Brother David will testify to when we met a top scholar who was a. a a bachelor of science and um blah 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 uh can't remember his titles this was like the head professor and he was like saying this and that and i was like so so i said to him so are you telling me on camera are you telling me that nothing can create something which therefore produces everything is that what you're telling me so apologetics have their place but it's very few and far between now immediately just to give you an example that guy if you've ever seen the meme of homer simpson where he takes on the halloween mantra and just comes back into the bush <laughs> that's what happened there he literally went back in the door and slow installments like he was on the mini elevator okay so but if that gentleman had wanted to stay outside then of course you know we would have explained the gospel more but he, he didn't want to but obviously, I'm saying that uh, one of the one of the other P's as well is prepare for the unexpected, because you never know what can happen on the day. You you may need to do some outreach with somebody, which is something which very rarely ever gets mentioned, um, uh, it, particularly in in um, a lot of fundamental Baptist circles. May have something to do with without natural affection, but that's for another story. Um, but yeah, so you may have to, there's been occasions where like it may have been an old lady one time where I may have had to go to a shop, particularly during the convict scam um, or whatever it was. So there are occasions where some people just want to talk to you or whatever. And I'm not against that. I think it's important to leave a good uh, reputation wherever you are, because remember, you're an ambassador for Christ, um, as the Bible says. So basically... Uh, we want to 
you know, be peaceable and amenable with all men. Now, another important point is always be prepared that there may be a time where you have to, and I, I say this um, with all sincerity, that there may be a time where you may have to uh, meet the person where they're at. You know, it's a, it's a common sales technique to meet the people where they are, right? But occasionally you may get somebody, you know, may have not been in sound mind or somebody who's just very angry. Or they may have just had a recent death in the blame and the family and the blame and God or whatever it is. Now then, obviously, we want to tread as carefully as possible. However, you know, that if you may have to um, be instant to reprove and re certainly an odd time rebuke. Now, generally the rebuke part for somebody who's unsaved in, in terms of who doesn't know anything about scripture or is not representing a false religion, that is very, very few and far between. A gentle reproof is generally what's needed, okay? Um, however, if it's a false prophet, then it's open season, <laughs> okay? But we still do that in a in a... We still start on a one before we get to a 10, okay? Um, you know, because, um, again, a lot of these people, we don't know their testimony. They may have grown up in the false Jehovah's Witness. They may, they may, may have not read the book, uh, Crisis Without a Conscience, and know that Franz's uh, brother uh, was a... Um, come out and said they were smoking cigars and drinking brandy all day. They may not be aware of that because the internet gets taken off a lot of these people, right? So even in 2024, never expect the unexpected sometimes, which is what I was saying earlier. Um, and also as well is depend on the size of your area as well is how many tracks you have. Um, you know, you don't want to be like a pack horse uh with lots and lots of extra um uh, bibles you know by all means take a couple out for sure you know um and like anything we have pens and paper we have digital devices i prefer pen and paper because it looks more traditional okay um but and it makes a person less nervous when you start tapping into something in in terms of the new world order technology we have now um so for example, let's say you get three or four salvations on the day, but you've only packed two Bibles. Well, do you know what? That's a great way to come back to that house and have some follow up with that person and drop them a Bible off. Now, if the people are moving away or they don't want you back there, but they believed on the Lord, whatever it is, you can still make a note of the address and send them a Bible. That's something um, I think is really important. You know, um, and... Obviously, there are going to be certain churches, if people don't have money for that, there's going to be certain churches who will um, get you King James Bibles, potentially. Um, you know, um, but a very important point, if it's not the King James Bible, don't send it. You're better off not sending something, right, and waiting for a King James Bible. Because the very last thing in the in the in the bible and then we've got obviously there's going to be a big documentary about this is um jesus said and just so i'm not making it up i'll read you it verbatim okay and uh, brother david will put it on screen if any man shall add unto these things god shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book and if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city. Basically, so that goes for if you write your own Bible, if you change your own Bible, ye being the living word, you give somebody a false test, you give somebody a false plan of salvation, a works based salvation. So that is generally most of God TV, charismatic, charismania, uh, most. 99% of Reformed people, 99% of Calvinists, uh, Worsleys, all of them, you name it. Um, yeah, even a lot of Baptists. God's going to take your name out of the book of life. Okay, now here's the thing. Like Judas, you were never saved to begin with. Yeah, who may see this video and are still preaching works. Now, caveat to this, my favourite word is that 
there are going to be people and and again now this is coming back to a tip for soul winners sometimes there are going to be people especially from the lordship spectrum disorder who may have gone to a church because we're coming towards the end eschatology you know the great fall away there's going to be people who are going to a church who have an unsafe pastor under them um and that he's trying to learn people a word and he probably nine times out of ten i bet as sure as sugar he's not teaching from a king james bible so and he is something which people may not know every bible says repent of your sins apart from the king james bible so that should that should give you a clue right so when then people have heard all their whole life or however however they've been going to church whether they're new or a long time whatever and they're hearing the term repent of sins and then you have to break down repent take time practice spanish repente o standa. you were turning through you're going this way and you turn to go this way you didn't magically become sinless unless you were jesus now that's not being flippant with people that's just a, a, a jovial way of explaining it some people are going to be a bit more stern the way they explain that what i'm getting that is um just to show people that you've been learned and studied approved and you're not ashamed you need not be ashamed so you can explain that or the greek word will be metania or metanoia depending if you're using koine greek or not um so yeah so basically um show show that um you studied approved because it all oh, it goes a long way but again unless you learn this in experiential knowledge of being out there to speak highbrow okay very depend on where you are in the world sometimes you have to may use it in certain places a little bit more but there's going to be a lot of places where just like the gospel is very simple the vast majority of the time probably it's just keeping it simple okay now if you knock on some seventh day adventist's door or you know uh sci not, um christian science Pick one at random um you know uh some mary eddie bakerite or whatever it is it's good to have this knowledge okay so yes we shouldn't like go too deep into false religions but it's it's good having a base knowledge to be able to uh counter the point and learn these things now i'm not saying you have to know every single thing about islam because i certainly don't yes obviously i know a reasonable amount but i don't want to know every single surah <laughs> because i don't need to uh, have my eyes on that filth right but but it is good to have a work and knowledge you would say to 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 um get get some understanding and if you can show people hey well it's death on practically every page you know and here's a contradiction here and here and here you know or or again if we want to lead into the odd time with apologetics and let's say you have a muslim person at the door and they have say oh i don't know a six-year-old child you can say well did muhammad marry a nine-year-old or a six-year-old you know you no, i'm not saying make a joke of it but just you know depend on the person you're talking to and that that may get that person to think how serious and how much they've been lied to with a joke almost like a comic religious comic book is the best way i can describe it um you know but speaking of comic books um and religious comic books the religion of scientology is a big one i want to speak about because this is massive with freemasonry in the church as well uh, just just going back to a bit not going off topic but just going back to a, a, a bit which i mentioned in the previous videos one of the subjects tick that we're going to do um and a little tip for people um i need to double check this but i'm sure the day l1 hubbard the creator of scientology is a little known fact that the day alistair crowley died the church of uh scientology started because apparently he's a super big fan right um so yeah so birds of a feather flock together so break breaking it all the way back down to when people are out soul winning let's say you get to a door and let's say that person's interested um i also 
try not to be monotone try to sound enthusiastic obviously you know if you're from certain parts of yorkshire um and you don't have the best speaking accent maybe don't be a talker um but if you can help that then at least try but remember it's not you that's doing the saving technically it's god's word right um but you want to start with a smile you know um and i'm not a big fan of this modern day thing of like how are you today wait for how are you today i don't buy into that at all i'm not against it but i'm certainly not for it um so we try to be brief now yes we want to be quick at every door because we're working right but we don't want to be so quick that we miss things and especially the door obviously where somebody's interested so let's say this person like i say has answered you're going to find a little bit about them you know i believe going straight into things and we ask him this question or something along the lines that something's phrased like this so if you were to die i'm just going to ask you one question uh we're out sharing the gospel today but more importantly than going to church or ever setting foot in the church building are you 100 percent sure it's a very sober question no but i just want to ask you are you 100 percent sure if you were to die today you'll go to heaven now depending on what they say at this point whether it's a very rare that people slam slam a door on your face that can happen but it, it's quite a rare occurrence even in reprobate united kingdom it doesn't very really happen a lot but let's say they say no or whatever then you follow that up with oh well have you ever thought about it would you like to go to heaven whatever you need to say now most people are going to say at that point a lot of people and on the whole people are on a surface level they're pretty honest when because they, that was the last thing they were expecting to get hit with so they're generally going to say well no i've never really thought about it or something like that and then you that is your opportunity to say well look i'm just here for a couple of minutes and if i could just quickly show you how to go to heaven if i can take a few minutes of your time and it is only a few minutes or however you need to say that again depending on the person um they they hopefully will let you do that now if they're not listening then you you keep an eye on them while you're reading this or however you're presenting that because you don't want to spend too much time at the door now obviously over time you'll get a level of discernment whether they are actually i mean we can never know for a hundred percent sure but there's a certain amount of time where you're going to know if somebody's just placating you pacifying you that you, they just want you gone they haven't had the heart to say no or whatever you know um and if it is a person that wants to hear it speak slightly slower but very clear so that they're hearing what they're saying you know um obviously we're going to go down the romans road is generally a thing like i said earlier but there's going to be other ways or other verses you may use holy spirit might bring you, you to all things of remembrance and suddenly on the day you might need have a a whole different way and different scriptures that you're going to present okay um you know i think in my soul winning presentation uh, i missed out of romans 5 8 which is what i normally say but god commended his love to all so that's why we get sinners christ died for us okay um so yeah the, the, there's you know there's sometimes it doesn't matter how many times you've done it there may be a scripture where you miss out but god's word is so powerful and if it richly dwells in you there's going to be scriptures you haven't even thought of and you'll just start quoting them verbatim over time but again i know how nervous people can get like and i'll give you this for example i have zero nerves throw me in the lion's den daniel when i'm speaking about the gospel or at somebody's door give me another door now if only we had more people like that right but i have to be honest there's lots of other inconsequential or nonsensical things that i get really nervous about and i'm not talking about dumb things like football results but just um you know is my car rental going to be on time or whatever i can get super like whoa whatever right it's worldly things we shouldn't do that we should be of a sound mind right but what i'm getting at some of that sort of like human thinking comes in and can and it can try and um pervert what you're doing when you're speaking right just stay on point and if that person 
didn't seem like they got the point what you were trying to make go back over it now i'm not saying go back over it verbatim the same way you did go back over it but maybe go back over it a different way you know sometimes you're going to need to go back over it the same way again it's all an individual thing this is why god is not for communism okay we don't have a cookie cutter this is not cookie cutter christianity okay it's great having um you know general ideas about how we do things but you know people just need to hear that the bible says um speak the word speak the word only so that should be a clue the next time you go into a church service and there's a 40 minute production 4k production before even a bible is even cracked open that's if there is one cracked open generally what follows is a motivational speech or somebody coming out on the skateboard with a square gun you know stay avoid at all costs okay mark them and avoid them now then let's say um that that person has believed what the gospel they believed you obviously they believe in the word here but they've also believed you and bought into you as well now i also this is a crucial point okay and it's it's one point particularly in the baptist world it, in christianity in general but particularly in the baptist world people um will say things like you don't need to pray at the end okay that's true you don't however i like to say something along the lines like this now you've you've asked you've told me that you want to get saved today okay now what i want to do is salvation happens in the heart bible says first man believed on the righteousness and then confession is made under salvation now then there's a lot of people out there who think that hey whosoever call upon the name of the lord okay now that calling upon the name of the lord is coming from within right because first man believeth under righteousness okay so that's from within now then it's very hard to a spiritual transaction shall we call it something happens inside right when we get saved okay we just know it now an oratory confession going back to the prayers i like to say them like this if you want to call up if, if i'll encourage you to pray with you right now and say lord i know i'm a sinner I know I deserve hell. Lord, thank you for saving me today. Thank you for giving me eternal life in Jesus' name. Something like that, something very quick, because the Bible talks about uh, prayer being quick and precise. If you want a long prayer, then you go behind closed doors. We don't do that at somebody's door. You know, you'll often hear this in walk-tired churches or the charismaniacs or whatever or uh, you know black preachers call it cotton and i'm just playing for the praying to come over and i'm playing for the parachutes and i'm praying for the runway and i'm playing for the airport you know nobody needs a 40 minute monologue before we've even got to the prayer okay we're just affirming something with a the person they've got saved you then give them a bible ideally give them some contact number or you know no nonsense christianity or whatever it is or some certainly somebody recommended if you don't have a local church to go to. Now, if you have a local church to go to, that's where you're going. And I suggest when you go at the door, just to go at that little point again about, hey, we're out inviting folks to church today, but more importantly than go to church, do you know for sure if you were to die today, you're gonna to spend your eternity in heaven? However you need to phrase that, okay? Now then, that is it, that job done. At that point, when you feel like you've had enough, you know, you go and get some prayer, go and get some food, go home, have some fellowship, wind down, whatever. Now, I want to speak on this because, again, when I see it in a lot of um, particularly Baptist angles or soul winning courses or whatever, is practicals are not thing covered a lot. You want to have plenty of drinks with you as well because it's a bit I kind of skipped over earlier. You want to make sure that you have like a... Um, particularly obviously if somebody's not maybe it's not diabetic but somebody like a little tear away sugar drink with some water because sometimes water doesn't cut it and you may need a sugar rush or whatever it is you know make sure you have wipes a key one as well is like um when nature calls because you don't really want to be going in um people's houses to to use the facilities 
and some places in the world there's a no toilet nowhere so you have to get creative and i know people um can have a urinary tract or whatever it is or you know some people are nervous peers or or whatever it is so you have to get clever with things and i'll leave that for you to uh, find out how you are going to do that i won't reveal my secrets on this one all i would say is somebody who's studied in the art of stealth cam and you will find a place okay um so yeah so that's a that's a good practical take snacks as well um obviously when i'm taking a three course dinner um with us you know um i don't need a silver gong with caviar underneath like but you know make sure you take a couple of candy bars a couple of snickers bars you know um some nuts whatever you need but it's just something that's going to be there big tip is gum ideally organic chewing gum all food should be organic but yeah take some organic gum um and again um take some cologne you know we're not going on a night out to uh, talk to some hot chicks in the nightclub but take some cologne it's you know it's it's it's, it's um it, it's not a prideful thing it's just as long as again we're not like showering ourselves in it obviously um not that i'm against that but i just say maybe take it just a little bit of spray or whatever um and again especially for men as well you may want to take a roller ball for under here um obviously make sure you, especially in sunny areas is an absolute must you take a hat and shades and don't be afraid to not take your shades off if you're in 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 sunlight as well or whatever because your health is very important and i don't mean that in a walky kind of way because obviously i'm the least person like that what i'm getting at is you want to be out there as long as you can and there's going to be certain times where that sun is so piercing you're going to have to try and keep your sunglasses on sometimes or your hat on or whatever and um i know what it's like to be out there in 110 degrees with a full suit on <laughs> okay like it's no fun trust me and i'm just going to make a little point on this as well is that like yeah i'm about my father's business and i've said more often than not i do like to wear a suit um but i also want to make a subtle message here for certain pastors listening i love you in christ but what you need to understand is some people if the as long as it's at the knee level ideally if they're wearing trousers and a short shirt and a tie don't have a go at them they're out there looking smart winning people to the lord okay just because your dress sense doesn't tick your box and your traditions of baptist traditions of men okay all right so let's take that point on board okay because that's a good one because we can all learn from each other um so yeah but look ultimately whatever you know outside a mankini whatever you feel comfortable wearing you know i'd rather have somebody going to wearing a vest top going to a door than somebody not going to a door with a suit on behind closed doors oh wait we have something for that's called bible college right um so yeah um oh yes big tick bible college sorry fake bible college because it's the world system right so that's something we will be talking about because i know a lot of y'all go there okay um so yeah that's definitely something we'll cover but staying back on point um ideally if you are going for food and fellowship afterwards make sure you know where you're going afterwards ideally as well um and here's another thing as well is particularly for people who um, are just online ministry uh, or don't have a church to go to on a sunday um the best time to go soul and i can't emphasize enough him if there's one thing i want to say in my experience is it's great going soul winning on the lord's day okay but practically speaking in my experience it's better going soul winning on a on a saturday okay um brother david will testify to this it's 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 better going there's just something about going on a saturday um and you know that, that's technically the true sabbath uh if you want to say it that way you know it's great going on the sunday as well obviously you can say the lord's day or whatever but you could you know you have to think about it a lot of people uh are out at that time in the morning and go to the fake church or whatever it is you know yeah you might catch him later on the day or whatever but saturday 
is Saturday just just from experience is definitely a better day to go soul winning. Um, and one of the practical tips as well is particularly if you are going soul on the Saturday, you know, on a Sunday, I like to, uh, you know, um, go to the beach. Um, you know, I listen to my, um, you know, I'm not going to tell you everything I listen to, but I do listen to, uh, you know, audio Bible a lot, certainly lots of preaching, uh, which um, Brother David can recommend in, in a separate list at any point. Um, and, you know, that's, at the, you know, between swim and relax, have a have an idea of your Sunday if you don't have a church. Now then, what I would say is this, is if you do go to church on a Sunday, then maybe go soul winning on a Sunday because it's very exhausting for somebody who, um, who works a full-time job, then has church and, you know, um, a soul winning day, you know, do we have a day of rest? Okay. Now, practically, that looks like we should have one day in the week where we rest. Now, we're resting in Christ, obviously, on the Sunday, ideally, the church, but that's not everybody's situation. So my practical example is, is if you if you have a church to go to, go soul in the day you go to church, if you can. Okay. Now then, for all the um, religious zealots out there, <laughs> No, for all the for all the people who um who really do love soul winning, you know, you're gonna get given the strength on eagle's wings, and you, you are sometimes gonna do both days, or yeah, even almost every day of the week, or whatever it is. Or if you're in a fortunate enough position where you work a certain shift, you can go more, or whatever, and then absolutely go out and do it because the more you do it, you know, the the more the more experience you're gonna get. Now, the Bible does talk about rewards, and here's a key tip I would recommend. Never, ever have that in your thinking when you go out there. I don't have that in the secular world when I'm selling, and I certainly don't have it in the, in the spiritual way because I don't want human um, being zealous for the Lord in the right way. I don't want to, I don't want, ever want that one-upmanship of, I want more gifts than that person. Now, look, if I get them or somebody else gets them much more worthy than me, that's great. You know, because we we don't know about them. We're in a natural terrestrial we're in natural um terrestrial realm, right? We can't see the spiritual realm yet. So we don't know how those gifts are gonna look. So we don't need to think about them. You know, um you know, and just on the separate side note that when people in the charismatic world tell me they've seen Superman flying around on roller coasters, I can take it to the bank that's not in heaven. However, other stuff, we just don't need to worry about it that might not be there, okay? You know, um, if the streets do have gold, whatever, or however that looks, or a sea of glass, amazing. You know, um, you know, there may be time and testimony I can touch on certain things. However, um, yeah, so, you know, I just want to, to cover all that. But one, one other thing I would say as well is never be afraid to use testimony as well. Because you'll find this particularly, I know a lot of people listen to this will come from a Baptist background, maybe, um, and, um, or a Reformed background. Never be afraid to use testimony. You know, of course, this isn't the charismatic show, and we never lead with testimony. But there may be another occasion where you're going to reach that person through testimony alongside the gospel. Don't be afraid to use that because, again, you know, Brother David can testify how many times and how many salvations we've seen with that or whatever. That will come down to you as the individual because the way I go soul winning is going to be very different to the way Brother David goes soul winning and so on and so on and every single person hearing this, right? Okay, so again, going back to that point, it's not cookie cutter. You know, God's give us free will for a reason, okay? Um, and it, he makes it very clear about having traditions of men, right? Okay, nicely brings me into segue that point about having to wear a suit, okay? Now, again, the ideal is maybe to look smart, okay? But, you know, um, there's going to be certain parts of the world where if you wear a suit, you may get shot, okay all right and these a lot of these people brought i call it broad stroke baptist comments where it's like hey 
no, that may be the way you do it, okay, but that's not everybody's way, all right? And uh, again, big tick, we're going to talk about traditions of men, and particularly in the Baptist realm as well at some point, okay? And get a get a get a map as well. Another practical tip: get a map and put it on the wall behind you, Ding. Um, and you can see where cross out where you've been. You know, it's good to study. You know, and the Bible says, obviously, along lines of endure like a soldier, endure suffering like a, you know. And you can see where you've been and have that plan like a tactical map, and you can cross stuff off. And again, if you live in a small area, don't be afraid about going back out there a certain time later. Now then, I would suggest maybe don't go too often. Maybe try and go to another area and then come back to that somewhere. Um, but yeah, um, and again, um, there are other ways. It's not just door to door, you know. I'm all for having people in the marketplace and maybe doing a bit of light preaching. I didn't slip my tongue and say a loud street screeching. I said light preaching, you know, to invite people to a gospel presentation. You know, um, I once helped a pastor out through um, through pure convenience uh, when I was in New York for a long time. And, um, you know, he was preaching essentially the right gospel from a van, a mobile van that I used to drive around Times Square all day <laughs> and Broadway. And as much as that's fun to have a, an uber loud megaphone and seeing a Mormon and saying, hey, how is the Death Star up there? Okay. Like, that's fun, right? Okay. But it doesn't do people no good if you're launched into a gospel presentation and you've just moved on to the next city block. When people are like, well, I was just listening to that bit, right? So it makes no sense, which is why Pastor Brian Kelly isn't a pastor if anybody comes across him. Um, however, he is preaching the right gospel, but he also teaches something called Ruckmanism or Ruktardism, uh, which something again, tick, we will cover at some point. Okay, very, very false prophet, demonic teacher, uh, Dr. Ruckman. Again, somebody else called himself doctor who was not medically qualified. Okay, uh, that's a pharisaical title from the Bible for anybody who doesn't know that. That's where we get the term doctor from. Okay, um. So, yeah, um, like I say, you may want to switch areas. Um, and also, maybe reach out to network. There are soul winning groups in areas. But a little point on this is make sure that the people you're going to see um, are all King James only. Now, if they're not King James only, um, I suggest that um, you may be, uh, I'm not against not having a certain amount of fellowship with them. But um, it's too grievous to to be preaching from a false Bible at a door um, because that's not the true living word. That's a copy of God's word. So that I certainly would suggest if they're not King James. Um, but there are plenty of resources out there uh, for people to reach out to. Um, and, you know, um, depending on which part of the world you are in, um, you know, you can always ask me or Brother David, you know, there are other people out there, we can potentially put you in touch with people. Um, but yeah, the, the good thing is, is don't be nervous. I, that, that's a great thing. That's like a, a tip I, I always come back to is just, uh, it's easy to say those words to be calm, but honestly, what have you got to lose? You know, you've met a stranger that you're never going to see again. They don't know how good you are. They don't know it's your first time. They don't know it's your hundredth or thousandth time or millionth time, yeah? Okay? That will dissipate over time. You know, I remember the first time I went solo and I was super nervous. But once, I, and, I, and this, is, this isn't bigger myself up, but once I got that first door out the way, I never looked back. Okay? You know? And again, like, it's great having the right zeal, but remember the Bible says they had a zeal for the Lord, but without knowledge. Now, I'm not saying you need to know every single scripture, but you must at least know the basics of the plan of salvation, okay? And everybody who's listening to this, I'm pretty confident they're going to know that, right, obviously. But for anybody new, 
or anybody who isn't saved, then see the video below on how to get saved. Um, but yeah, um, and I want to make an important point as well, something that, which rarely gets discussed. I've heard Pastor Anderson mention this uh, once or twice in the past. Um, look, we know most people in, quote unquote, the Baptist church are unsaved. So sure as sugar, most people, obviously in the Catholic, the great whore, are going to be unsaved. But let me tell you this, I have met two two quote-unquote catholics in the world around the world who were saved so never assume because somebody is corned beef that they go the mother of harlots for whatever reason you know the statistically the likelihood of them being saved is is ridiculous right but that can happen you know um i've gone through with somebody who's and again, this isn't like sort of somebody like Tommy Murchison. saying, I've spoke to these people, even though they're literally saying a false gospel. No, I've spoke to people where I've went, not just because they've won me over on their personality, no, the words they've said, as in they've followed verbatim, hey, it's faith alone, it's without works, it's through Christ alone, he did it all. Now, just because they've maybe said, oh, well, there's these saints or whatever it is, and Rome is the true church or whatever, this hyperbole and nonsense, that's very secondary. I'm just saying there might be a very rare occasion that you may come across somebody like that. And if they've told you it's faith alone, you can't lose your salvation, I'm against works, I understand that the church I go to teaches that, but I go for there for X, Y, Z, whatever reason, you have to count that person as saved. Now they could be telling you a load of porky pies, but I have to go with what they're saying. I can only go with what they're telling me. Okay, you know, um, I am going to create a portal and let me just come back to my charismatic days and see if they're telling the truth and just pull it out the ether. Okay, so I think sometimes, supernaturally speaking, God give you discernment. Okay, Holy Spirit will give you discernment on what's going on. But a lot of the time, you just have to go with what the person's saying. Um, but, uh, yeah, um, I think that's pretty much it for tips. Um, and lastly, I guess, just come back to prayer as well is on the closing prayer, always after you finish soul winning, try and remember the names of people, even the people who didn't preach the gospel, if you managed to catch some names, try and pray over these people because they've you've planted a seed or maybe it's left them a tract with the plan of salvation on. And yes, goes without saying, obviously, uh, just if people aren't in, yeah, even people are in, try and leave a tract with them to get them saved. But that pretty much covers it. Um, unless there's anything Brother David wants to ask or yeah, think a couple of. of things. So I, yeah. I think the biggest thing, and I, I can already sort of imagine people asking this question. Uh -huh. See, even for you and I to go, so it's been difficult because we're still a couple of miles away, a couple of hours away, you know, even by train, and it costs a lot of money to go anywhere in the UK by train. It's awful. You know, we have to kind of meet up at the middle. But at least, you know, if you're nervous, you don't have to, do it in your own city but like a lot of people will be kind of like me where they want to go out and do it yeah. but they haven't necessarily got the gift you've got to just go out and talk to people sure. and like and i'm not saying this to like you know like suck up to you or anything but i can't express how much of a blessing it is to to have you because i know that i can just let you do the talking and you can just do it not everybody's in that privilege you know for example I've, we've got a brother in Scotland who likes to have video calls with me once in yeah. a while. His health, bit hit and miss, but, you know, supposes it was good enough that he could go out for a bit. But he hasn't got a you in his life that he can sort of go with to sort of lead him and teach him. What do people like that do? Because they are stuck. They really want to go out and do what you're saying, but they've got nobody to go with. They've got nobody experienced who can, you know, sort of raise them up and edify them to, to teach them. What do they do? Okay, well, the good news is there's something you can do. Now, the obvious one, again, is we're always going to do prayer because all things are done through prayer and supplication. And the prayer being that something may need settling on your heart uh, rather than just a, 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 an imprecatory prayer or a practical prayer. There might be something that needs settling on a certain issue. Now, again, obviously, if, if people are... Uh, mentally or physically challenged particularly physically challenged okay um there are um ways where i've known people in the world who've gone uh, as a silent partner 
and um, you know sometimes I have a recording device okay now then people are watching the people don't know have to know it's on if they ask or whatever so that's absolutely one thing that can be done but again through um, here we know enough people around the world who we can point to who maybe be in certain in western regions who can go solo and yay even i hope on. you do because i don't <laughs> but you're more sociable than i am yeah yeah i was going to say sorry i um i just don't like saying i right um but yeah i, I have some great friends who um in the scandinavian region who have tracks that are printed up in like over a 150 languages who are really in touch with a lot of people so even if it's not me that likely knows them i can you know forward that on to people so that covers uh, one of the answers in there and the other one would be obviously again if there's um somebody let's say who um for example lives in london i know that for good or bad there are a couple of Andersonite churches down there. And, and again, um, I wouldn't recommend going to an Andersonite church. Um, but uh, all I would say is this, if you are going to go, go with thick skin and an open mind. Okay. Um, but the one good thing about going to an Andersonite church is they are going to be going soul winning. Right. Okay. Um, and yeah, um, if there's another thing would be, um, let's say uh, somebody over the next few weeks really wants to go soul winning. Well, um, you know, uh, I, obviously, as you know, I, I've got a, a big ministry trip coming up, so I need to help off other, other people at the minute. However, if people want me to uh, go soul winning with them, while I've got some time here and the time when I come back, if you want uh, me to come to you, if you can facilitate me to come to you, I'll practically, that is probably the best solution. I can come and take you out with me. Uh, That's for people maybe... in, the, in the States, just to clarify. Um, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm geographically bound, but wherever you lay your hat, that's your home. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I'm saying is over the next few weeks in the UK, and when I come back, um, obviously after uh, a, a three or four weeks or whatever it is, then yeah, another few weeks in the UK or whatever, and then I'm away again. So those times, and again, from right now as this goes out, a few weeks, I can come and show you off. There's a, a few people at maybe it's different locations in the UK. If you want to come together um, and, and, and facilitate me to do that, we can all meet up and... Um, yeah, it's a good way to get to know people, and I can also ask any questions or whatever. Um, and again, at the minute, because I'm in uh, a full-time ministry position, uh, uh, trip kind of mode at the moment, I've got time to do that. So it's not like I have to dash off the same day or the next day. You know, I could even spend the next day, whatever, hotel I'm staying at or whatever. I can spend time and, and, and go through some, have some food together or whatever. Um, but... But yeah, uh, the key emphasis is on that, like, the one thing I can guarantee is when you go soul winning with me, you are you are going to see, more often than not, you're going to see a lot of doors knocked and a lot of different situations. Like, um, to give you an example, when we go out, we normally knock, I don't know how many hundreds of <laughs> doors we knock, but we did one point did count. It could depend how many people are in the house. If it's a nice day and everybody's out, we'll give out more tracks. So it seems like we've done more doors, but actually spoken to less people. It's hard to quantify, really. And and again, we're always ideal for quantity rather than quality, which goes without saying, because sometimes we've been out and, you know, a a, a time I harken back to in Manchester when we had one guy who didn't just only get saved, but he had a bunch of questions once he got gone. And that literally took up three quarter, one or three quarters of the day, but it took a, a good chunk of the day up. You know, now if he was the only person, I think we actually got two salvations that day, if I remember right. But that guy, the first door we knocked at, 
and again, just even that in itself, be prepared because this has happened to me, I've seen twice now. The first job I've knocked on, we got a salvation. Yeah, it's like the first sort of like sets you up <laughs> yeah. for the day, doesn't it? Yeah. And, it, and that sets you up for the day, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. Funny how when no, I did it without you one time, I got sworn I'm told to F off on the first door. <laughs> Can I just say, I've never been told to F off. I think it's probably love the visa. It's your anointing, you've got the uh, anointing. I've obviously yeah. not got the anointing. Rose petals. Uh, no, somebody did love the visa about me once, and you saw that, right? But yeah, nobody yeah. ever, like, oratory went F off or whatever, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, generally, and particularly in, the, in, in in Europe or Scandinavia or whatever, people are generally going to open the door and talk to you, right? I think you've just got to la- laugh it off and don't take it so personal. I mean, we're not the ones going to hell, so, you know, <laughs> no skid off my nose. Yeah, make a yeah. joke of it, you know. Just tell, <laughs> hey, I used to be a referee, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Or, or, or whatever it is, you know, just, just um, yeah. Yeah. I guess the other, so the other thing is, there's not really a question from the audience. It's just yeah. one little perspective where my opinion differs on yours, but that's kind of for my reason. Not about the soul winning, because I am not telling James how to do soul winning. That's not happening. <laughs> it's about yeah. the clothing thing, because obviously your philosophy is you like to look smart, you like to dress in a suit. You've yeah. got your reasons why. I dress like this, and you know I dress like this, and I'm sure Which my is fine. You probably know that I dress like this, and I dress yeah. in hiking boots because I'm practically only hiking. So my situation, right, and this is my perspective, it's not that one's right and the other's wrong, this is why I do it. Number one, when I've worn a shirt and tight, people think I'm a Mormon, or people yeah, even think that we're Jehovah's Witnesses. He so needs I just a think little like, black badge yeah. on there. Or they think we're <laughs> JW, so I think for me to have an informal look, it kind of like cancels you out on that one. Yes, but then. Yeah. As well, like for me, because James does most of the talking, the comp- and, but you're not very organised, the compensation is I'll bring the tracks, I'll bring the wipes for when you need the loo and a bag to put your dirty wipes in. I'll, I do a lot of the heavy carrying, I'm like the donkey, right? So, and the thing is as well, and this is disgusting, but I sweat a lot more than normal people. Now, work shirts, the shirt and tie type shirts, they're made of a different material. And when I'm doing all that, I will have a horrible big wet patch on my back that will be freezing cold. So for me, this is like a bit more absorbent. It absorbs that horrible mess. And I wear a coat over it so, you know, I don't smell the whole room or, you know, wherever I am. So that's my justification Amen. for dressing like this in my situation. So it's not that one's right, one's wrong, but we've we've both got our reasons, haven't we? I guess that's the only thing where I would give a different differing opinion on that. Yeah, I covered that earlier about about the the, 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 the you know a lot of people, particularly in a Baptist church, yeah. who insist on wearing a suit. And the thing is, I I, th- I think you know uh, why I use it to my advantage, and and I say this a lot, don't I? I will say I'll make a joke and put people at ease straight away by saying, hey. I, you, that's right. You heard the word Baptist there, you know. You know. You, I bet you thought it was a Je- Jehovah's false witness, didn't you? Yeah. Or thank God it wasn't a Jehovah's witnesses, or or yeah. something like that, right? Okay. Um, or you could have a joke with them, say you're debt collecting. Yeah. Well, whatever, whatever you know, you need to say. It. But um, yeah, look, like like how I said, you know, you're going to have major problems with pastors in in certain really hot parts of the world who. You know, I like those pastors, you know, but sadly, they, they, they've they gone down the route in certain areas, uh, which is why all of us, no matter who we are, can get things wrong, where they've gone, hey, I know it's like 110 degrees here, and I know you're from a different part of the world, and I know you, like, really love your beach, and even though you're wearing a, a, a tie, a shirt, and actual proper trousers, the short trousers, that's still not right. You know, it's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's ridiculous. So I very much agree with depend on who you are, how you want to feel comfortable. You know, all I would say is maybe don't wear any satanic clothing. Yeah, just, and don't look no. like a, don't look like a dick. You know, and, and right. yeah, nothing yeah. that's got like you know. The, I mean, I've got a couple of t-shirts that you probably like. You probably wouldn't want to be seen in it in front of the Christians. Not because it's like really horrible, but you know, I like when you bought it when I bought it from me unsaved days and because I wear the same clothes for about ten years. So, you know, it might be like a because, cash t shirt or something. Yeah. Like nothing too <laughs> bad, but someone somewhere would probably say something. Um, you know, that's just Yeah, oh yeah, and like like I say, I mean the thing is I've I've gone out soul and the whole medley of, of, of stuff, depending on my region, depend where I am. And like, if you think of it this way, like, you know, you might, as the Bible, you might meet someone in the field when you're hiking, you know, uh, you know, because as, as you know, I'm an outdoors person, right? So, 
like I have no problem going straight from the field to the door, um, field to fork. You know? um, so you know, I'm not against that. It's just my um, way of maybe gathering people's attention a little bit more. But again, um, not for one second should any human being say to another human being, "Hey." Just because you're slightly dressed this way doesn't mean that. Um, you know, um, like I say, I, uh, like what, what, what Brother David just said there, like, you know, he's carrying two big bags because we do put, because just that's not because it's like, look at us, but because we genuinely do knock lots of doors, like lots of doors, we need all them tracks. And it's like you said, the things that you have to carry, you know, your sun cream, your sunglasses, et cetera. And I don't drive, so, you know, it's, it's got to be carried on a bag. That's just the way it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I say, sometimes we do we do have, I, I have got a car or whatever sometimes, but even if you do have a car, you still have to, there's some streets that are super long. You can't just keep going moving the car for parking or whatever it is. Parking so much worse in the UK than it is the States. <laughs> and it's, so on, it's, down, not, it's not, it's not like in America where you can just go and park yeah. where you Owning want. Owning a car in this country is like a punishment for not using the horrible train, which right. is like a punishment for needing to go anywhere. <laughs> exactly right. So, so yeah, so you've got to kind of, like, I guess, get used to them things. And, um, you know, the Bible also does talk about the sweat of one's labour. You know, and he stank, S T A N K, stank. Um, so, yeah, so the fruits of the labor are that, like, you know, we get to do that. And, and obviously, you know, Brother David just does a super important job as well. So, um, like, we're all cut out for different things. Like, you know, I, I can say this now, Carl, as we talk about the stuff that I just can't do, what he can do. You know, I'm not technically minded in that way. I'm. I'm not um, as eloquent sometimes, maybe, as what he is or whatever. Um, but again, like, and and, and he'll, he'll testify this. If I ever have to speak in a in a in a, a highbrow event or whatever, I think that's probably the time where I make a point of maybe wearing a tracksuit or something or whatever like that because I don't like being forced into that situation or whatever and i think like a daisy university i don't know if i've shared this before but like if somebody's open the crisp packet in the auditorium i want to flip the table over because i can't concentrate on that like it's not natural for me to be that way i need to do, be on the fly and just do as is right so i guess that's thing the one things i talked about there wasn't it we never know what situation yeah. we're going to be in right yeah i mean we've dealt with all kinds of people you know you get really horrible people you get really nice people you get people that want to listen you get people that don't want to listen you get very stoic people you get very emotional people you get all kinds of people and i think like going as a pair you just have that constant brotherly love and moral support it doesn't matter if like every door you hit is being a complete dick to you because a you kind of you always know how to humor the situation anyway and you, you can sort of <laughs> laugh it off and it feels a lot less lonely yes i know i'm really sorry guys pair. not to put david off but there was one time I should have included, I forgot all about it because it's such a rare event. I forgot to mention it, but there was one time we're in York and somebody wanted to fight me, right? Like fist fight, right? And I was like, great. No, I wasn't. <laughs> but, but like, um, it was because he got upset about the Jews and then when I started reading the facts off, it was just making him more upset. Um, and so yeah, he wanted to come out and wanted to fist fight, and uh, and so it was just like a thing of like every time you get close, you'd be like, well, but then suddenly break into what about this question? And it was just a kind of real weird thing, but like what what David said in the end, uh, just kind of you don't want to like strike somebody ideally, <laughs> um, but in the end, you know. We've never had top. any physical altercations, have we? We've so never ever had any crazy. physical altercations. And sometimes you just get stories that are just really funny like we had one person I, mm. I know i'm going to heaven because i've got esp oh, yeah. <laughs> just stuff like this perception weird stuff that like was that. brilliant yeah. 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 yeah and then there was and, someone wanted to bang on about scientology to you didn't and again something. again stuff okay we didn't there's there's been times when i've met what the world would consider very well to do people like that like woman in sheffield do like very serious job um like a lawyer or something and and um you know, 
like really? perfectly normal until you're talking no, about no. religious stuff and they're into some weird stuff like yeah. aliens and, and then she proceeded to tell me all about all, all the past stuff. events and past lives <laughs> yeah right yeah and you know so and these are like people who can vote <laughs> that's it right and this is this is this is this is going to be the, the tip that i missed off the first question I had was like um trust me folks when we're saying this stuff it's like we do have such in the day because god has you know godly humor right we have such a great laugh in the day because yeah. you don't you know some of the stuff that people tell us is such bs yeah. uh, and and but also the stuff that's like really genuine the pe stuff people didn't know you've had a laugh about how you've taught it and the, the way that people have been brilliant and interacted with you and everything and it's just it's all angles of humor and it, it, it's 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 yeah we have a laugh right and sometimes it's like we're having a laugh about stuff and they get so wound up about stuff that we're not even trying to wind them up like there was one guy who said like <laughs> my insurance policy is matthew 25 the sheep and the goats oh, and yeah. then we showed him how wrong it was and i said so do you want to cancel your insurance policy then sir yes <laughs> i'll cancel my insurance policy. <laughs> stuff, yeah weird stuff like that it's funny in the yeah. most unusual ways yeah we've you know we've 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 you know, see, you know. Oh, um, like, oh it's God, oh, F off. And you're like, oh, so something could create something from nothing as they're slamming the door. Yeah. You know, we have, we, we do, we, we have a yeah. good laugh. And I think that's one of the encouraging things if people ever want to want to do go solo and, 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 um, and like I say, and meet up and stuff is like, like, you want to make it fun and the thing is it's never like forced fun it's always organic and it's always just how it is you right? something to talk about you get so much brotherly love out of it you just learn so much about each other and in between you calls and nobody's answering we're just chatting about random stuff aren't we like you know, yeah 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 you you, yeah, you know yeah. take your step counter keep an eye on your step yeah. counter you, and you know, then, like you're pointing out all the Masonic buildings, all the York, <laughs> yeah. it's just basically point three hundred and sixty degrees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it never gets, you know, especially the amount of fake churches and Gothic churches and things around there. And I love catching like um, my my cousin's pals out, and we just come across a random church, and it's like the vicar's vicar is outside. Which, by the way, that found words found nowhere in the Bible. But like, we just hey, could you just? You know, to give me some directions. Actually, why are you here? Could you tell me the plan of salvation while they're here? <laughs> no. <laughs> Not a clue. They only want Not to hear themselves speak you. on Sunday. They don't want to contend with us. But no. I, like, I like sometimes as well, we'll plant the odd seed, like even if somebody doesn't get saved. We'll make you, you'll have slid, slid the odd comment in there. By the way, if you see people in town screaming, "Repent of your sins" on a soapbox, take yeah. it to the bank. They're not saved. All right, have a good tip. <laughs> yeah, we educate as well. We educate while we're around. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sunny shocker, sunny shock dad, Manchester. If you ever see him stood outside the Trafford Centre, screaming, "You've got to repent of your sins," whilst wearing the Thesians to it nine T-shirt, not saved. So yeah. Um, we tried talking to his group once. They sh they they stopped talking to us, didn't they? There's a couple of cronies that we spoke to, and then after that, yeah. we invited him. I invited him on camera to come to a round yeah. table. Okay, I said you can have hours of prep. I only need two minutes. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Sometimes I, I like, people, like the, the just the cognitive dissonance that just sweeps over people as their entire religious system yeah, and collapsed. all they could come up with and, and I hope we find this footage someday because I know you've got it that, that um, when you were talking to him and I jumped in him when because he I think said the camera quality was so bad on that day for some reason it was me old phone it just I couldn't use any of the footage what, on that day one of these guys would be learner groupies said to brother David um, and he thought about it and he did the old theologian thing who um <laughs> like the disciples chin who um well believing is a work <gasps> yeah. that's like the worst that's thing i've ever heard in my life yeah. anywhere yeah, yeah. ever ever heard ever but to, you are going to win an argue try and win an argument on the day yeah. damn yourself to eternal hell because I Leaving to work. I liked that bit where there was like four young lads, sort of like looking up at Sonny Shocktard or Sonny Shoker, as his name is, and you and, and he wouldn't talk to you, so you just went up to them and said, "Oh yeah, there's a this Muslim guy going to so take one of our tracks instead." <laughs> and they found it yeah. hilarious. Yeah, he's not going, and he's like that. <laughs> he's not going to heaven. Have one of these instead. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that was we, a classic day. We didn't yeah. even go 
soul winning on that deal. We're just bopping around Manchester. That was <laughs> it, right? Yeah. No, there was never, another guy that was screaming at people and nobody was listening to him. And then you spoke to a guy. And he's like, "Do you understand a word he said?" No. Okay. And then we spent five minutes with him, and then he like believed what you showed him and like received it. It's like, well, we've just done more in five minutes having a one-on conversation. Than that bozo is <laughs> doing for half an hour. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Um, yeah, and just just like. Um, I think like when you see like YouTubers like um, walking around all day in the film in Piccadilly Gardens yeah. or, you know, um, and you, you know, you just get to meet people. Like, uh, like I remember when I was out there once at the, uh, the Convid um, rally and um, there was Charlie Beach straight away. Charlie, hey, Jews religion's false, you know, and we had a smile. But he was all right, and we all walked in unison and stuff. So you, you never know, again, where, when you're gonna you're gonna meet people. Um. And thing is, well, I would say when you're going to the states, I would say to people in the states, look. I live a very, very boring life. My life is incredibly dull. You never have a boring day. There is always something that happens to you on the day. If you're in America and you get a chance to go solve with, with James, don't even think about it. Just do it. You don't have to be confident. You don't have to be a good speaker. He will do all the talking, but you will have a great time. You will absolutely love it. You will have such a laugh. And, you know, even if you never go soul winning again, you will remember that day. <laughs> you will just have yeah. a great time. Yeah. I miss it um, so much. I want to get back out there, but you keep upsetting my wife. <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to be gone hopefully um, one day in the next few weeks, aren't we? Yeah, so, she's out of the country now, so we'll definitely be uh, doing a couple, of, yeah. a couple of good days before you go, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll, we'll be having a chat about that afterwards. Because, yeah. uh, again, it's not just that like, I have ministry to do in other places and stuff. I've got like a, a lot of... Um, I just moved house and the, the, the loads of other stuff and I've got loads of paperwork to do. And uh, as, as as we said in the last video, I, I have so many people that I have to go and see over there and in and, and, and both countries and so on that like, I just just like a lot of, lot of planning and everything. Um, but uh, yeah, um, yeah, I think that's pretty much, uh, pretty much covered it, hasn't it? I think. I think so, yeah. I think that's... Um... A wrap. So I hope every I hope everybody enjoyed that. I know I did. So uh, take care, everybody. God bless. God bless.